When you begin to look at the way our government operates and the words that are used and the symbols, you begin to see that the most powerful law in the world, and let me explain to you this, there are two basic kinds of law on the earth. One is called civil law. It goes back to a Latin word, civili. The Ilius were, in the ancient world, the gods. Civili means the people of God. So we have something called civil law. Civil law is a law of the land. But in every country, the land is different. So that you can do things in America you can't do in Russia. You can do things in China you can't do in Africa. Because the civil law is based on the culture of the people who live on the land. But there's a far, far more powerful law that the kings and the powerful men of this planet live by. And it has nothing to do with civil law. It's called the law of water. Because on the earth there's only two things, land and water. There's three times more water than there is earth, so the law of water is three times more powerful than the law of civil law. It's called the law of the high seas, the law of water. This is why the Vatican is called the Holy Sea. The sea is considered holy by the masters of this planet, the waters of the earth. And consequently, based on that idea that the law of the sea is the most powerful law on the earth, it's referred to as banking law. The law of money is the law of the sea, the cash flow. And once you understand that you can get a credit card in China and use it in Africa, you can get a, you know, open up a bank account in New Zealand and use it in Alaska. Why? Because it's banking. And now you're talking money. And consequently, money is run around the world in one operation. Banking is one thing. Once you understand that the law of the land is the people's law, of their culture, but the law of money is called the law of water. This is why, incidentally, the Statue of Liberty could not be put on American land. It was put in a harbor, because the Statue of Liberty is a maritime admiralty symbol. It's called the Statue of Liberty, not the Statue of Freedom. There's a world of difference between freedom and liberty. Liberty means you ask your father if you can use the car. If he says no, you don't use it. Liberty is what a sailor gets when he pulls into a harbor. He asks the captain if he can leave. If the captain says yes, and he most likely is not going to, but if he says yes, that means you have the liberty. You pull liberty. You don't have freedom. America is not the land of the free and the home of the brave. We're not free or brave. We're ill-informed, entertained, and totally ignorant to the powers that be on this earth and how it works. Let me give you an example of how the law of water works. When you go into a court, why do you have to go to court? You play tennis and basketball on a court. The whole idea in a court is to put the ball back in the other guy's court. So consequently, this team stands up and throws the ball at that team. And that team stands up and throws the ball back over there. And the judge sits here, and that's what he is, a judge. He's the referee. He doesn't care who wins or loses. Somebody's going to pay. And he's going to get paid, so he doesn't care who wins or loses. He's only there to make sure that the game is played correctly. It's called commerce. Because the whole world is commerce. Look up the word commerce in a law dictionary and tell you sexual intercourse. Marriage is a partner. Partner is a term that's used in business. And consequently, if your business with your partner doesn't work out, you're not going to God, you're going to court. Bring your check and your, and your house and all your property with you, because it's just business, nothing personal. You need to understand there's a world of difference between the United States and America as a country. The United States is a privately owned corporation. It's a privately owned company. The corporation headquarters is in Washington, D.C. You also need to understand that Maryland is Maryland, and that Virginia gives us that word virgin or vagina. Virginia, virgin, Mary Lynn. The two together is a center of power, Virgin Mary. 
Virginia, Mary Land. What does this have to do with anything? Well, that's the center of power in America under the Virgin Mary. Once you begin to look at the Vatican, now it's going to get serious. We live under the Vatican in this country. The Vatican system, of course, is based on the ancient Roman system. And in Rome, the seat of power for Caesar was called Capitol Hill. Capital is a Latin word for money. You either have the capital or you don't. And consequently, in the Capitol Hill, Caesar would meet with the Senate. That's what we have, a Senate. The symbols of the ancient Roman Senate were two fasces, cross, the crossing of the fasces. That's the symbol of the United States Senate. When you see the President of the United States standing and speaking to an audience, look on both sides of the podium. Look at the symbols. For many will look with their eyes, but not see, and will listen with their ears, but not hear, and with the heart, not get the sense of it. You need to open your eyes and look at the symbols on both sides of the podium, which is about an eight or nine foot high fasci. A bundle of sticks with a hatchet head, the symbol of royal power in Rome. Our system is under Rome. It doesn't matter what you think of the Roman Catholic Church. It doesn't matter what you think of the religion of the Roman Catholic Church. All you need to know is your country is dominated by the Pope, period.